Today we're with Dr. Stan Feldman, a nationally recognized valuation expert. He is a, an associate professor of finance at Bentley College in Waltham, Massachusetts. He is a member of the Valuation Resource Group of the Financial Accounting Standards Board, and he's chairman of Axiom Valuation Solutions. Welcome, Stan. Nice to be here. Thank you. We'd like to talk today about business valuation, uh, more for the CPAs, lawyers, and financial advisors in the audience to discuss what are the factors that they should be looking at for business valuations as they're advising their clients. As we've seen from, from work you've done that there's a growing number of business owners who will be coming up to deal with valuation issues as they are approaching the, the baby boom generation and the entrepreneurial boom generation as they approach retirement. Many of these issues will be coming up. So we want to give them a better understanding of what business valuation means and what they can do to help their clients really navigate through this, this activity. So let's start with just the basics of uh, what is a business valuation? Well, a business valuation is, is uh, calculating or estimating what a business will be worth both to you and somebody who might want to buy it. Um, it's an analytical exercise that we go through, and I, I'm guessing that as we go through this, we'll, we'll go through those factors as well. But essentially, it's determining how much somebody would pay for the business that you own. Okay. Now, what kinds of situations would a business valuation be either helpful or necessary for an owner? Well, I think that uh, if you're uh, anticipating transacting the business, selling the business, you would certainly need a business valuation before that happened. Uh, if you were doing estate planning where the business was the primary asset in your estate, you'd also want to do that. You'd also want to value it for that purpose. If you are contemplating a loan from a bank uh, or, buying, uh, or buying even another business, you'd, you'd want to do a valuation of that other business in addition to the valuation of your own business as the two businesses were combined. And typically banks, if you're uh, borrowing money for, for transaction purposes, uh, you would, uh, they would require a, a business valuation to be done. Okay. Now, what about, uh, I hear people talk about buy-sell agreements, business succession planning being, a, being an important activity, especially with multiple owner businesses. How does valuation play a role in that? Well, a buy-sell agreement is essentially an insurance policy between owners of the company. Uh, each owner has insurance, if you will, on the other if the other dies, passes. And the, uh, the, the basis of that insurance is going to, be, going to be the value of the business. So in order, before you buy that kind of insurance, what you really want to be able to do is figure out what the business is worth currently. So you, you purchase the appropriate amount of insurance and you pay the appropriate premium. You also want to update that if you already have one periodically because the business may be worth more. Alternatively, it might be worth less, but essentially you want to do a valuation over time as the business changes over its life cycle. Now, many of the businesses um, that have built up over time, privately held businesses, um, have a number of aspects to them. They may own some real estate. Um, they may have other activities associated with it. When we're talking about a business valuation, how do you really define the entity that's being valued? Well, essentially, a business is a collection of assets, um, and those assets are combined usually by the owners and managers to produce a product or a service that will generate some cash. To the most private businesses, not most, but many private businesses also have this, what, all, what we would call associated real estate. Associated means that uh, they own the real estate, but, not but the real estate is not necessarily an asset of the business. So when we value the business, we look at that real estate or, or, or any other asset the business owns and make a, de a determination of whether it's a business asset or a personal asset that's affiliated with the business. Uh, maybe an example would be uh, if a uh, personal services company owned the building they were operating out of. Uh, and also leasing other space in that building. Now, a certain portion of that space would be allocated to the business that we're valuing, but the other space isn't. That's a real estate business. And typically in these cases, but not all the time, but typically the real estate is usually owned by another affiliated company. So it's pretty easy to separate out the real estate from the, other, uh, from the business assets, if you will, that generate the cash flow of the business that we're valuing. Now, as we're thinking about those assets, uh, you know, 
I hear people talk about, well, they have the inventory of the business, there's furniture, fixtures, um, there's goodwill. What, what are really the components of value that, that you look at? Well, there are three basic components of value. They're, they're tangible assets, which would be plant, equipment, inventories. Uh, they're intangible assets, and intangible assets are as what intangible would mean, which essentially you can't touch them or feel them, but they're nevertheless there. They would be things like your customer lists, copyrights, patents. Uh, they would be workforce in place, for example, uh, capital in place, plant and equipment in place. Um, it would be uh, non-compete agreements. And goodwill is essentially a residual in this, in, this, in this calculation. If you looked at the aggregate value of tangible and intangible assets and you said, let's say for argument's sake, that was worth 100, but the value of the business was worth 500 for argument's sake, then $400 by definition would be goodwill. And uh, there's two kinds of goodwill. There's, a, there's goodwill that appears on the books of a company, which would be always be acquired goodwill, which is what people normally and typically look at or see on the balance sheet. And then there's uh, goodwill that's generated inside the business by investments that the owners make. And that goodwill doesn't show up except, except in the price of the or the value of the business ultimately when it's transacted. But it's the hidden asset, if you will. And part of what we do in business valuation is figure out what the value of that hidden asset happens to be. So you've described that there are these various assets involved in the, in the business valuation, but when you're doing a valuation, let's say, of a manufacturing business, is that what you start with, those assets, or what, what, how do you really start the approach of a business valuation? Well, there's typically two ways. You can do it bottom-up, aggregate, identify the assets and value each separately and calculate goodwill in a, in a variety of different ways. But typically what happens is, is we look at the, the three factors that generate value, regardless of whether it's value for tangible, intangible, or goodwill. And those three items are the size of the cash flow, because in the end, people are transacting that cash. That's, that's what they really want to know. They want to know how fast that cash flow is increasing over time. Uh, so growth of cash flow is, an, is a key determinant. And the third determinant is the required rate of return, or what's the rate of return an, invest, an informed investor would require on this investment they're making in this business. And it's those three factors that really determine the value of the business. Now, those sound like the factors that you would generally hear if you were someone were valuing a public company in, a, in an acquisition. So those are the same type of things that are then used in a private company? Well, uh, exactly right, uh, except in a private company, there are some other kinds of factors that you need to take, uh, take account of. So for an example, when we say the size of cash flow, for most public companies, uh, Enron and WorldCom and Tyco aside, uh, presumably these companies are reasonably transparent and the cash flow that they generate is pretty much, you can you could look at the books, so to speak, and you can figure out what the cash flow is. For a private company, uh, by virtue of the fact that they're private, they don't have to report to any reasonable standard of accounting or transparency. Generally, they don't have outside investors. If they do, it's a different story. But if they don't, and typically they don't, uh, they simply uh, have to answer to themselves rather than anybody else. The result of this is, is that most private companies legitimately run what we would consider certain kinds of expenses through the company uh, that are uh, expenses or really income being disguised as expenses. 